Okay, so lots of people ask when they're on the courses, how do I create my own altar? And so I thought I would just talk through my own altar and also to assure you that really, even if you only have a little tea light and a stone that you found on the beach um, and a special cloth to put it on in your house, that's okay. Really what we're doing is we're establishing a direct line to spirit. It's a two-way communication where we can really um, allow ourselves to step outside of time and sit uh, in a stillness um, and step outside into the mythic. The mythic means that it's a, it's a world that isn't um, caught up with the physical demands and the emotional demands of our current life that we're in. It helps us to step out of a drama or, or a triangle that we might find ourselves in and connect to our ancestors, to our spirit guides, to our allies. So I thought I would just show you this is my altar in the lodge. It's coming up to Sawain. It's, uh, we just had the autumn equinox. So on my altar at the moment, I've got lots of offerings um, in gratitude. Gratitude is a very important part of our practice as pacos and shaman, shamanic practitioners, whatever you want to call us. We're always offering in order to receive um, knowledge or wisdom. So I've offered um, a, a sunflower that's grown in our garden just to acknowledge the harvest that um, I'm reaping at this time of year. I have several candles lit, but you only really need one central candle. And so you'll see that there are receptacles to receive the energy and there are also um, objects that are going up into the air and I see them almost like antennae. So they're sort of tuning into the airways if you like and sending out a signal. Um, you can use antlers or feathers. Um, I've got a beautiful eagle feather here which I have. Um, been given which I use for smudging and um, someone gave me this beautiful little wooden carved pot to put it in um, and then I've also created uh, lamas this year I've created a corn doll or a goddess uh, corn goddess to represent the fertility of life and um, giving birth to new ideas new projects. Um, you could have a picture of your teacher or someone who's important to you. So I've got my teacher Don Augustine here. Um, obviously I've got squash and all the natural objects are really to say thank you to Mother Earth for the abundance that she brings and the way that she holds us so sweetly on our bellies. Um, this is a, an honouring of the masculine and the feminine energy that we all have weaving within us. So you could also look at it as the being and doing energy that we hold. This is uh, Sheila in the gig um, fetish, which is really the theme of this lodge. So that's why I honour her here. And they're all, so all these objects are like power objects really that help me really tune into that empowered part of myself so that I can make the best decisions um, and meditate um, as well. Uh, I've also got a, a, a wand or you could create a prayer stick that places that on the altar so that you have a special place to put all these things. Um, yeah, so another thing to remember is that we honour we honor different elements and depending on which part of the wheel we're on, in the Celtic wheel, in the Celtic calendar, especially in, the, in Europe, in the UK, depending on that is what kind of element that we want to bring. So we could bring a water element to this altar and then that would make it look very different. We might have a sh some shells or a bowl of water. 
a sacred spring water um, to help us to um, cleanse and purify aspects that we want to release. Um, we may want to call in the fire, the element of fire, or the element of earth. So it's good to have these represented on the, on the altar, either all together, so you get a really lovely balanced um, you know, feeling to it, or one at a time. The feeling I get when I come and sit in here with my altar is one of coming home to myself. And it's really hard to articulate how that feels, but it should really help us to become more aware of our heart's centre and, um, yeah, just take some time out from day-to-day -day life. Um, but the altars of old, the altars that are, you know, like the power altars like Machu Picchu and Stonehenge and Avebury, they had some amazing um, stone sort of tableaus where people, healers, herbalists, midwives, would work those altars and they would connect to different altars around the world. So, so you can think of this like um, almost like a touchstone or a connector to all the other altars that are active um, in our world at this time. So you can, you know, connect to the earth energies, send um, messages, psychic messages or energetic messages, or you can help clear energy. So it's a really amazing tool. Um, in my tradition with Nancy Dancing Light, for example, we work with dragon energy. And so you can see here we have a, a dragon on the wall and that helps me to, to build a relationship with um, that energy which could be in the earth as dragon lines, but it can also be a helper. Um, so what I would say is that it's really lovely to bring your own creativity, your own authenticity to your altar. So whether you make something by hand or whether you find something in a vintage shop or, you know, something that's going to make it really yours. And that's the main thing is, to bring your own uh, passion and um, love into your work. And there are many things you can make. You can make a, a shield, your own little shield that is very protective of your energy. You could create, um, like I've made a, a felted altar cloth, which helps me because it's got a labyrinth, so it helps me really come into myself. You can make little pouches for your kuyas. There's so many things, it's endless. And as I say, there's no right and wrong way of doing things. So I hope this has just inspired you with a few tasters um, about what you can do. And um, I can also send you some information through email as well if you need anything else.